Calvath from Perth, Australia, and you're listening to Local Band Smoke Out! Cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Fear Culture in the building! Yeah, hell yeah! Let's go! Gentlemen, I appreciate you being here. My co host today is JB. That's JB right there. Uh, if you guys could do me a favor, introduce yourself, let me know whereabouts in the world you are, and plug and promote anything you'd like. Uh, yeah, I'm Matt. Uh, I sing for the band, uh, Fear Culture. Uh, I'm Jesse. I play bass. We, uh, I guess uh, the, really the only thing we want to promote right now is uh, we have a new song coming out this Friday, uh, July 7th, and uh, we gave it to you to play today as well. Yeah, we uh, it. based out of Ohio. Yeah. We get a little bit of an exclusive, man. That is very cool of you. I appreciate it. Hell yeah. <laughs> we'll jam that in a little bit. Uh, but how long have you guys been together for? And were you in previous projects before Fear, Fear Culture? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, well, the band Fear Culture has been together since 2017, right? Yeah. Yeah, probably started beginning of 2017. Um he was in another local band, and I was in another local band, and um, I, I think it just, for one reason or another, for both sides, it just didn't really work out. And we kind of, um, we lost a member, and him and I have always been really good friends. And uh, I think we were like recording stuff at the time, and I was like, hey, you just, mm-hmm. you just want to hop over and like be in the band? And uh, we kind of took a break around like COVID twenty twenty one, and. Uh, we haven't released anything in like three years, so this is an exciting day slash week yeah. for us. Um, so yeah, we haven't really been doing much. So all um, the stuff on Spotify is is pre COVID. Spotify is uh, Spotify is like during COVID. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, anything in a long time. We've been playing out, um, doing some shows and and whatnot. But other than that, uh, this is like our comeback kind of rebranding type deal yeah hell yeah badass what what was it like uh working with kellen oh dude kellen was great um out of like anyone sometimes i'll do like a fanboy moment sorry but um my my old band was like an older sleeping with sirens like ripoff like we love sleeping with sirens uh like the first two albums we loved everything like the higher you sing, the better was like our, it was, it was ridiculous, but we were kids. Um, and uh, Callum was just like, hey, I'm looking, this is like right when COVID happened. And he was like, I'm looking for some features and whatnot. Um, if anyone wants to hit me up. And it was just like a regular Twitter post. Mm-hmm. Um, hit him up and I was like, hey, dude, um, I have kind of like this lighter song for us, like as far as our band goes. And uh, he was like, yeah, send the track over. And, uh, he sent me his number. He sent me, like, in a matter of, like, a week, he sent us, like, way more takes than we needed because the part we originally sent him was, like, 20 seconds. And then he was like, hey, like, if you guys, like, want me on the song, like, I feel like this probably isn't, like, enough time. So he sent us, like, like 50, 60 tracks in, like, a week. And he was like, what do you think about this? And we were like... Well, that, what do you mean? Yeah. Like different different lyrics each track, or just like three or four stems per time per take? Yeah, like he he like came up with his own, uh, did like what was already there uh, as far as like the lyrics and melodies went, uh, like gave us options and then like doubles and harmonies and everything. Like wow. we totally didn't ask any of it, and he was just, he was just like, "How about this?" And we were like, "Yeah, a- dude, this is fantastic." Like, what a professional. This is, what a professional. Yeah. He, he's such a nice guy. And it's, it's so nice to, like, meet someone like that and, and you know, someone you really look up to and you've liked their music a long time and they turn out to just be, like, an awesome person. Like, I don't know. I couldn't have asked for a better experience. So. how? Uh, tell me about the single that we're going to be premiering here in just a little bit. Tell me about what it means to you guys. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a like big comeback single. 
Uh, the fans yeah. are probably salivating over it. But uh, tell me, what, what can you tell me about it? And then I'm going to pitch uh, it to JB after that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. We've been sitting on it for quite a while now. Um, and like Matt said, it's been three years since we were fleeing since we've released any music. So um, today will be the first time that like the public has heard new FC, um, which is pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, we, you know, this is the first song back and we feel like it's definitely a big step forward as like compared to our older songs and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, we still love the older stuff. We know that people really enjoyed that, but we definitely feel like this is a pretty massive step up uh, compared to the older stuff. So while it's been three years, we definitely feel like hopefully it'll be worth the wait. Now, how are you guys sending it to me? Just so I can do it on the side while JB starts asking his questions. Yeah, good. Uh, I sent the uh, private YouTube link to the Instagram. So okay, you should have okay. the link in there. Gotcha. JB, go ahead and hit him. My question is, I was reading your guys' Spotify bio, and you, it says that you guys have opened up for the Palisades, the, I believe, the Slaves, and the Red, Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. I was just wondering what your experience was with it, and was it an easy experience, or was it a, a bad experience? Um, I just want to hear a little bit more about that. I, I mean, I think every show we played has been great. Um, our biggest show to date, uh, I think, was the um, second to last one we played, like last September. Uh, we actually opened up for Bad Omens, um, and they had a Boyd on that tour with them. Um, right on. That was a pretty, that was a pretty big show. Um, but I mean, yeah, the last show that we played was with Escape the Fate. Um, but we played, yeah, with like Bless the Fall, um, bands like that, and. I don't think I've ever had any issues. It's always been a good experience. Yeah. Of all of the all main... the guests of all the guests you just mentioned, who was the the coolest behind the scenes? Oh man, I think the one that we had the most interaction with was probably a void. Um, with Benny, yeah. that, that, that I can remember. Yeah, yeah. Benny's wild, and they definitely put on a ridiculous show. Yeah. Um, super nice dudes and. We're down to hang out and just um, before and after playing uh, for both of us. So, yeah, they're, they're pretty crazy. But they're, yeah. they're super nice down to earth guys. Hell yeah. Uh, JB, did you have one more oh. before we jam spiritual? Yeah. Um, do you guys have any, or if, if you guys can tell us, do you guys have any future uh, big like headline um, shows coming up or anything you can tell us on that? Um, yeah, we're working on a headliner right now. Um, that's probably going to be sometime soon here in Columbus. Um, I, I mean, we'd love to get out. Like, if there's the want, then, like, we want to travel. We want to tour. We want to get out and do more stuff. Um, we're working on that behind the scenes a little bit. But right now, it's kind of just around the area uh, we're in right now. But, yeah, we're planning a little a little headliner thing yeah. coming up soon in the future. Yeah, the yeah, only uh, like the only official announced show we have right now is um, se September fifteenth. We're playing in Columbus with uh, Attila on their ten year anniversary tour. So that's the only official announced show that we had so far. Hell yeah, yeah. Attila's wild. So uh, regarding yeah. spiritual, how much of the song do you want me to play? You can play all of it. I mean, yeah, play. it's up to you. Yeah, we can jam the whole thing. Song. All right, yeah, that's cool. That works for me. <laughs> We are hanging out with Fear Culture, and right now we have an exclusive, an absolute ex what? exclusive going down. Spiritual. Drops July 7th, you said? July 7th. This July, 7th. Friday. July 7th. Here we go.
mean, it sounds badass so far. And Matt, you do all all the vocals. Well done, sir. Oh, Jesse got a little back back up. Going on that. <laughs> Some chat questions I'm going to get to after this. I think it was worth the wait. It sounded pretty, pretty damn good in my opinion. Really quick before we finish it, who who uh, did you guys go to for for production? Uh, so we've gone to. Well, I guess I've gone to in past bands. This guy, he's local to Columbus. He lives in New Albany. Um, I'm trying to think of like extra stuff he's done, but um, his name's Kevin Langford. He lives uh, right outside Columbus. Um, he worked on um, uh, this or the Apocalypse Dead Years album. He helped work on uh, one of the Crimson Armada's albums. Um, I'm trying to think of what else, but he's just been like a good friend for a really long time. Um, so you've, you've used him in the job. past? Yeah, yeah. We've okay, used okay. him in the past. In the past. But he just kind of is phasing out of the audio thing, but is still working with us and I wish he did it a bit more because I, I think his work is great, but yeah. You're like, bro, I need just one more, man. Just one more. And you pulled him back in one more time. I love it. Hell yeah. <laughs> They're from Ohio, Ashton. Ohio. I like all the like little stutter and glitches and stuff going on right there. <laughs> Yo, badass. Give me a hell yeah. Badass, gentlemen. Well done. <laughs> Fellas, let's do some fun ones. And then I also like to do some trivia. You're probably wondering why I asked you to bring hot sauce today. Mm -hmm. I knew yeah. most, most people are, are curious. Uh, if if you if you have it, go get it. But before you do, real quick, uh, what movie or TV show, if you guys could agree on one or the other, have you seen more than anything? Or if I look up trivia on this movie or TV show, there's no way I stump you. I think the only thing that we have in common are are scary movies. I don't think we watch the same TV. We're like New Girl. <laughs> <laughs> New Girl, yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't know. We wow. don't we don't watch a lot of the same stuff. What about, okay? What if we get? Could you pick a scary movie? Do you know about Do you know about the ring? Not a lot. Oh, you could do like Fortnite trivia. Matt would probably get stop, a lot of that. Stop! Stop! What up? Um, like Family Guy, nothing. You could maybe do like Family Guy, and yeah, we we might be able to do some Family Guy. It's a lot of 
lot of seasons to go through. For trivia, I, I do but, think it's harder. Yeah. He's smart. I do think it's harder to pick a TV show, but we can go with that if you'd like. We can try that. I think that's pretty much the only thing that, that might be our best bet. Yeah. All right, let me look up Family Guy trivia. Uh, go, Jesse, go grab the hot sauce, and then JB, go ahead and hit him with another one. <clears throat> my, my, uh, well, I guess Fortnite sounds like it's uh, going to be your answer. But what is one thing that you love to do when you're not doing music? Uh, yeah, I mean that's just me. Um, I'm a nerd. He's he's way more exciting in his life. But um, I'm I'm always <laughs> at the computer, so I'm doing. Music stuff, trying to write, playing video games. Um, I like Halo just as much as Fortnite, but I think he just wanted to make fun of me. So, um, Halo's badass. Yeah. Do you play yeah, Fortnite I, every day? No, man, come on, dude. Well, you know, I, I play not. a certain video game <laughs> every day, so that's why I ask. I play Call of Duty I, Mobile every day. I play Fortnite every day. I play Halo. Um, I got a couple friends that... Uh, I'll play Halo with like once a week. Um, Halo Infinite, I see that comment, isn't doing it that much for me, um, but still get on once a week play. So, I will that's going to out. Let's see, uh, let's see your hot sauce of choice. I'm going to go with this homemade one. I have about like 30 or 40 uh, hot sauces, but yeah. this, this one's like a top three hottest for me. The one that I have... Uh, like in my fridge right now is the Tabasco Chipotle hot sauce. Um, I do have, I think like, a, like a like a little box of like assorted hot sauces somewhere. Um, it's like a game. Um, I don't know where that is right now, but Tabasco yeah. works. That's I like, cool. Tabasco like spicy cool. stuff. But yeah, the Chipotle Tabasco is like usually my go-to. For sure. Well, let's see if we can stump you here. On Family Guy, which again, you told me I could pick, or you got to pick, and then you picked a TV show that has many episodes. Let's see if we can stop you. In Family Guy, there's a part where, uh, in one of the episodes, a tour bus carrying a boy band breaks down in front of the Griffin's house. Meg is extremely delighted. What boy band steps off the bus? What boy band steps off the bus when the bus breaks down in front of the Griffin house? That's, that's my answer. You can go with that. I'm going to say NSYNC. That is not correct. <laughs> Enjoy the what hot sauce. It? Don't worry, I'm going to do it with you. The answer was Hanson. The three brothers of Hanson step off the bus. <laughs> that's a, that's... Hanson like crackers. Yeah, this one's so brutal. I'm just gonna put a little on my finger, and uh, stuff, stuff, yeah, because this one's this one's got like ghost pepper, all kinds of crazy things in it. Yeah, well, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, I wouldn't be doing all that. Woo! That's a lot. I had some like ghost pepper salsa at one time that uh, yeah, took me out after a, a couple chips. <laughs> He's like, no. That's no. Uh, so, is there is there plans in the future to uh, get other features like you guys did with Callum? We act, yeah, we actually um, in one of the new songs. We actually already have a feature for um, for one of the new songs. Actually, yeah, but it's obviously not the one we just heard. So there is there is there like a rough? Do you guys have like a rough timetable mapped out of the next single, the next single, the next single, all by the end of? this year or by early next year? I think the only other one that we have right now is, um, yeah, I think we have like, I think the next single that we want to release, we kind of have um, a good time frame for when we want to put that out. After that, um, I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, I know definitely for the next one we do, and that one won't have the feature on it. Uh, but that one will probably be the song after that. So maybe like early, early next year, maybe, maybe late this year. We try to have like a timetable spread out to where like there's we're sitting on stuff. Like there's more than that, um, and we're <laughs> it's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have super bad acid reflux, but I'm going for it. Um, so yeah, we have some stuff that we're sitting on. Um, and 
yeah, kind of like you guys said, we're just trying to keep the content steady and continue to go. So, cool. I don't think there's any specific by this time. It's just kind of keep keep it going and and. Yeah, I think I think the goal is usually somewhere around like every two to three months. Uh, we want to try to release a new single. Yeah. That way, we have um, time to kind of let the songs uh, breathe. Um, but also, we don't want to. You know, we want to make sure that we're staying relevant, essentially. Make sure, sure we're constantly releasing um, content, especially new songs. So, yeah, I think the goal right now is about every two to three months. Let's do some fun ones. Uh, what okay. what scares you guys? Do you have any phobias? <laughs> the outside, man. Um, you know, uh, every, so, like, there's, there's a common lyrical theme in our songs that uh, is very like mental health and anxiety, depression focused around like most of the lyrics, um, and that's just because I'm like, when I when I started uh, writing stuff for the band, it was just an outlet to express what I was going through, um, and uh, so I I have like a ton of anxiety, a ton of OCD, depression, all that stuff, but I also have agoraphobia, which is like super fun it's basically like i don't know how to explain it but it's like a fear of being trapped in a situation you can't get out of like one of my worst uh issues early on was like i hated going into movie theaters or like malls because it's like oh, i feel like people are looking at me or something and like i can't get out of that situation and if i have to like run out of the mall or movie theater everyone's gonna look at me or whatever and um now it's like you could put me in the middle of like a farm with like nothing around it like for miles and I would just freak out because of it. it doesn't make any sense. It's an irrational fear. But yeah, that one that one has been in my life for a very long time. Probably over half my life. But I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, what the how the fuck am I supposed to talk about? <laughs> Spiders? Um Yeah, I don't know. I guess uh my worst would probably just be um I guess like claustrophobic, like uh, claustrophobia would probably probably be my worst fear. Um, I'm also I'm also still pretty scared of the dark. I would say in general, um, I love scary shit, um, but I'm definitely like uh, I don't know. I love it because it scares me, but like you know, sometimes I gotta sleep with the light on, sort of thing. What's the scariest really movie, horrible. Jesse? What's the scariest movie you ever seen? One where you had to sleep with the night on the light on that uh that night mm. honestly i'm not sure like anything recent um let's see i know I, I went maybe the most recent one that i've seen that probably like scared me the most because um i went and saw in theaters was smile that one like really creeped me out a that lot that movie is crazy um, creepy that was yeah, a yeah, yeah. Movie. Other than that, I mean, when I was younger, I like I, I watched um, like the the OG like 1980s It, um, and I was scared of like fucking shower drains for the longest time because there's that scene in that movie um, where he's in the uh, locker room and Pennywise comes out through the shower drain. Um, yeah, like uh, shower scenes, like taking a shower when I was younger was always just like I'd have like I couldn't. Yeah, I guess even now, like I shower, I have like a clear shower. That's why you don't shower anymore. Sort of thing. Yeah, that's why I don't shower anymore. I have like a clear shower. Dark, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I like to creep myself out. Favorite munchy meal ever. Go go hard, junk right? food. Go junk food too. Go crazy. My yeah. Man. Every every day, um, I'll wake up and get a coffee, but that I have to have. I, I get like four McDonald's cookies like every time. Um, I think I'm addicted at this point. Like they put something crazy in there because I, I need that more. Than, I need that more than the caffeine. Yeah, I I can't go without chocolate. I can't do no sweets. The problem. Yeah. Um. Yeah, just to touch on the movie thing one more time. Um, Final Destination, all of those movies, probably the worst. Traumatized the generation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I believe they're I believe they're re overhauling that franchise. Yeah, there's yeah. a new one. There's a new one supposed to be coming out that I know of at least. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah that was there's there's definitely some things in there that I uh, yeah I still don't like doing. But yeah, as far as um, I guess mine would probably be like flaming hot Cheetos is like definitely my go to like munchie like snack. Um, that's pretty much like anytime I, I'm at a gas station and want to get something and like, I don't have a hankering for something like specific. That's usually my go-to is always like flaming hot Cheetos. For sure. Yeah. Uh, we got time for just a couple more. JB, what would be, uh, your final question? If you guys could go do a performance at anywhere in the world, what would be your dream venue? Oh man. Do you have an answer for that? Uh, or country to know. play play or at, country. In particular. I was I was gonna say I don't know probably something just like Wembley, like being able to play Wembley yeah. would be insane. Yeah, that's that's really just the first thing that comes to mind. Those Honestly. European festivals seem insane too. Yeah, like like reading and stuff is just like I've been watching Hellfest like live videos, unbelievable. Like I can't even. There's so many people you can't not see people like. Absolutely insane. I feel like that'd be crazy. Being in a different country and stuff would be like probably cool culture shock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, that would be nuts. Probably something like that. It's a good answer. Uh, my final question for you guys today, and I appreciate your time, is uh, if you if you've ever made a mistake in any band you've ever been in, what was that mistake? Uh, so we we can you know, make sure nobody else does that same thing or just general band advice that you could give to a, a, a local band that's just starting out right now. I got it for you. Okay. Okay. Well, this, you're going to answer for both of us? I'm, I'm going to answer, but it's, it's a compliment to you. Okay. Okay. Social media engagement is so important. I've been in so many bands and I know you have too. Mm-hmm. Where the social media thing, it's like, Once you release a new song, or I guess like back in the day, you'd release like a whole album or a whole EP that you spent like so much time and money and work making. And then it's like, dude, we posted it. Why don't we like, why aren't we famous? Like what happened? And like this guy with like TikTok and Instagram and stories, I don't even know how to use TikTok yet. Like I have to learn from him how to do it. Like the, the engagement and consistent engagement and always finding like, nowadays it can be like even short form stuff um i think that's so important in maintaining relevancy because if you're not going to be the one to do it there's going to be 800 other people that might have not as good of a song let's say but they're all over social media so you, they're they're doing the thing people always hear about them always see them um and i've i've seen you like absolutely spearhead that entire um area while being in this band and especially the second time yeah it was, i think we definitely uh have had our issues with that but um yeah social media engagement is is my biggest thing yeah i mean that's just like yeah it's yeah it's not only promoting your music and like you know promoting that aspect of it but it's promoting the band as people um getting people invested in yourselves as a group you know, usually when you're in a band, you're in a band with friends and stuff like that. So um, not only do you want people to listen to the music and stuff like that, but, you know, you want people invested in you. Um, and, um, yeah, the only thing that I the only other advice I give is uh, make sure you invest in yourself as a band. Um, don't just go the cheap route for everything. I know most of the time that seems easy and you know, being in bands when I was younger and stuff like that, um, whether it was like production, like mis- mixing, mastering, anything like that, or artwork or merch or anything like that. You know, sometimes we would just go to the cheap route because it was easier and faster. Yeah. Um, okay. But I promise you, like investing in yourself and, um, you know, I know sometimes it's difficult and stuff like that, but trying to get the best quality you can out of everything um, will pay dividends in the end. For sure. I mean, I think that goes to show with um, spiritual a lot. Um, that song took a long time and stuff like that. But, you know, we went to somebody who we knew um, did fantastic work um, and we had worked with them before and everything. And so instead of maybe going somewhere that would have been cheaper or something like that, 
um, we went with something that we knew would be the best end product. Even uh, Gavin, the guy that did the video, shout out to him. He's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, does amazing work. And yeah, like you said, we could have just gone the cheaper route and saved some money. But if it really is something that you're serious and want to invest yourself in, then uh, yeah, you know what you said it perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. Really quick, last last question. Chad wants to know who's the messiest in the group. The messiest, Matt. Matt. Okay, that's what we figured. Well, that's, I, I didn't know that, but that's what that's what they're guessing. They said, "Oh, it's probably Matt. It's probably Matt." <laughs> For a reason. There's like, yeah, it's me. I know it's me. For sure. Um, for all time, so it's me. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for being here and joining. Uh, congrats on Spiritual coming out on July seventh. And uh, if, if you ever catch yourself driving behind an 18-wheeler with a bunch of uh, metal pipes behind it, like Final Destination, make sure you pull around that mother and then and, and, uh, don't stay behind it because that, that uh, sh is scary. And, uh, yeah, man, we look forward to the, to the uh, track that has a feature on it in the future also. But you guys are awesome, man. Have yourself a fantastic day. Congre hey, yeah, you guys for having us. For yeah. Thank you BG so much. And JB, thanks, both of you guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, uh, and Lizzie, of course, setting all this up. So, yeah. uh, shout out to Lizzie who, who did set it up. We appreciate you, Lizzie. And uh, we'll make sure we'll send you guys the YouTube link for this. It'll drop tomorrow morning. All right. All right Thanks, Sounds guys. Good. Enjoy yeah. the rest of your day. Appreciate Ladies and gentlemen, fear culture. You too. Give me a hell yeah. Cheers. Hi, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band. Smoke out.